Hi, I'm Dave Patrick. The purpose of this videotape is to illustrate the proper technique of applying UltraCoat. While UltraCoat is unique, this technique will apply to any brand of polyester film. Some of the unique features of UltraCoat is that it's very easy to use, won't bubble or sag, long-lasting, colors won't fade, tolerates a very wide range of temperature when you want to apply it, and has a unique feature of being able to reposition should you make a mistake, reheat it and reapply it. And at this point, we have 27 colors with more to come. The basic tools for applying Ultra Coat are a hobby iron, such as this here, sandpaper, and X-Acto knife. However, we recommend using a straight edge, a sanding block for the sandpaper, cotton cloth, scissors, a pocket thermometer to set the uh, temperature more accurately, Model Magic filler is an excellent filler for filling in the nicks and dents, and a hot air gun for shrinking. Now that we're ready to cut Ultra Coat, what you need is a clear, uncluttered workbench, something to cut your Ultra Coat against, and a safe place for your hot iron. The key to any good finish is preparation. Carefully sand your model. Uh, start off with a 150 paper and uh, work your way up to about a 300 grit and keep on sanding to get a nice smooth finish that you're happy with. Here's an interesting trick. If you happen to have a dent like here, you wet it, put the hot iron over it, and it'll steam the dent right out. Now's a good time to fill all the remaining nicks and dents with a good filler such as Model Magic from Carl Goldberg Models. Sand with a 150 paper, then work your way up to a 300 grit paper, always using a sanding block to ensure you get a nice smooth flat surface. A little extra time here goes a long way in giving you the nice smooth finish you want. When you're satisfied with the sanding, remove all the dust with a vacuum and a soft brush. Do not use any preparation. Ultra Coat works just fine going directly on the bare wood. Temperature is the key on putting on any covering film. You want to start by laying, tacking on the film at low temperature, going to high temperature to give it a permanent set and a permanent shrink. A thermometer like this is very handy in setting your iron. If you don't have a thermometer like this, I'll show you how to set the temperature without. In setting your temperature, there's basically three temperatures that you have to become familiar with. Low, medium, and high. Low is about 225 to 250 degrees. Ultra coat will just start to stick to wood. High will just start to uh, crinkle up and melt the uh, film like this. That's about 350 degrees. Medium is precisely in the middle. Now for compound curves, you'll probably want to go higher than 350 degrees. Keep in mind, however, that Ultra coat will melt at about 500 degrees. Because the ultimate tip is square here, we're going to do this one first. Just cut yourself a piece of Ultra coat on low temperature, iron it on like so. Now that you have the Ultra Coat ironed on the tip, you want to trim off down to about an eighth of an inch, all the way around. Now that you've got the Ultra Coat nicely trimmed off, you want to iron it over the edge, and this gets it ready for ironing on the top and the bottom. The next step is to cut your piece of Ultra Coat for your wing. Always do the bottom first. Cut about one inch oversize. Again, making sure that you have no dust trapped in between. You've cleaned the wing. Okay, now we're ready to uh, tack on the Ultra Coat. Remember, you want low temperature, about 225 degrees. Also, that the dull side is against the wood. Start with a fixing line down the middle here, like so. Okay. 
Make sure most of the wrinkles are out. You're going to want to temporarily give a little bit of a hit here with the heat so it doesn't flop around. Next step will be starting from the middle, like so, and in a little patch at a time, work towards the leading edge. Again, keeping on low temperature and working towards the trailing edge. Keep on working towards the tip at low temperature, going out. Remember the trick here is to pull away from the center of the wing going towards the tip. You don't have to worry about getting all the wrinkles. That'll come later when you turn the temperature up. Not difficult, but just take your time. Okay, now that we've finished this tip, this tip is square. If you remember, we already did the end of it. Let me show you what happens if you have a round tip. Now you're going to want to turn your iron up high, 350 degrees or better. As you can see, this has got a round tip. Make sure you have enough overhang to work with. This takes time and patience. Just slowly working it around the tip. Lots of heat. Tugging as you go. If you have a wrinkle that's just too hard to deal with, they usually show up around here. You can split it like so. That makes it a little bit easier. Temperature and patience will solve the, the round tip. That wasn't so bad, was it? There we go. You want to go a little bit past the halfway point so you can trim it off and overlap when you do the top. There we go, nicely finished, ready to go the other side. The next step after you've got the film tacked on the whole wing is to wrap it around the edges and iron it down like this. Now on the trailing edge you have an aileron. So we have to cut here. So, and here, so we can continue on. Okay, now that we have this nicely ironed on all, all the way around, we want to trim it flush like this. This is the trailing edge. There you go. Like so. After you've got that trimmed off nicely, go over with a nice hot iron 
like so. And this cleans up the edge. All right, we're going to continue trimming off all the way around the wing. Remember, this was the bottom of the wing, which you did first. And leave about, oh, at least an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch overlap. And again, just clean up the edge with the iron. This helps hide the seam. That's it. Okay, now that we've finished the left bottom, it's exactly the same procedure for the right bottom. Now that we've got one side done, you do the other three sides exactly the same way. Remember, always do the bottom first and then finish off with the top. The next step, or the final step, is to give the Ultra Coat a permanent shrink and the glue a permanent set into the wood. One patch at a time, get it all heated up, and rub it in. Get the Ultraco heated up and rub it in. Work in a small area, about three inches square. And like the uh, first time we put it on, you work from the center and go towards the wingtip. An even better way of shrinking the film, getting rid of wrinkles, and giving it a permanent set is with a hot air gun. You work it the same way you would with the iron. You do one patch at a time and rub the hot patch with the uh, cloth to give it a permanent set. Of course, you only rub over the wooded areas. You don't want to rub in the open areas. There we go. Covering a fuselage is just like the wings. A little different shape. Cut the ultra coat about one inch oversize. Make sure the iron is at the uh, lower temperature and that you have the dull side on the inside. Simply iron it on. Work around the edges first, and we'll come back and shrink the centers later. Now we're going to trim the ultra coat off just like we did with the wings. Don't forget you do the always do the bottom first, then the sides, then the top. This helps hide the seams. Now that you got the edges trimmed off, we're going to iron over like we did on the wing. Again, this helps to uh, 
seal and gives a better finish to it. Do this all the way around, just like you did on the wing as well. Do the sides, left and right, same way, giving yourself about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch overlap. Now for a fillet. What you want to do, so you don't have to butt the ultra coat to each other, you put a little fillet in here. And this will give a nice finishing touch, and it prevents you from having to take your X-Acto knife and trim off right in the corner, which may weaken the structure. Now that you have your fillet nicely placed, it's time to cut and fit for the turtle deck. This is something that you just have to take your time and trim and massage into place. But it's going to end up looking like this. When you're satisfied with the fit, it's time to iron it on. Not difficult to do, but take, take your time. Now that we have the fuselage fully covered, it's ready for its permanent shrink, permanent set. Remember, we've got to go up to 350 degrees, the high setting, and go over the entire fuselage, making sure you get that adhesive well bonded into the wood. Once you do it properly, you should never have to do it again. Again, if you want, you can use your hot air gun, being careful that you don't uh, put too much heat around the edges because sometimes it can pull away from the seam. Okay, now let's add some color to this airplane. Straight edge is very helpful and if you want to do a starburst like this, cut your piece first, lay it on. When you're satisfied with the position, I like to start off at the point, tack it down, then holding it in position. This is done at uh, low to medium heat, not high. Work your way out carefully. Try not to trap any air. Got your second color on. There we go. And push it forward. Beautiful, eh? <laughs> Beauty, eh? We've used Ultra Coat for the uh, second trim color. You don't have to use that, you can use paint. 
uh, epoxy works well, acrylic enamels, polyurethane. Nothing really needs to be done to the Ultra Coat except it needs to be clean, very clean. I recommend that you wipe it down with acetone before. If you want also, you can take some very fine steel wool and rub it where you're going to have the color. This gives a little more gripping power. But generally, it's an awful lot easier just to use uh, Ultra Coat and iron on the second color. Let's talk a bit about repairs. Let's say you flew into a, a tree gently, put some dents in your, in your covering. Most of those can be easily ironed out. Ultra Coat really responds well to this. Now, let's say that tree had a sharp edge to it, like this. The best way to repair that is cut it all out. By cutting the whole patch out to the rib, it camouflages the repair. Lay your patch in. Go around the edges first. Shrink it down. For the firewall, don't forget you should overlap oh, about a quarter of an inch onto the firewall and then put the paint on top. This prevents any oil from seeping underneath the ultra coat. In fact, you should fuel proof the whole area, including underneath and inside. In closing, a couple of things to note. One, if you happen to get some ultra coat adhesive on the iron, the color gets uh, glued on. Wait till the iron is cold, use some acetone on the rag it'll rub right off. The other thing, it's really important to remember temperature is the key to success. Low temperature for ironing on Ultra Coat, or any film for that matter, and high temperature to give it the permanent shrink and permanent set. Here we are, all finished. This ultimate was done entirely in Ultra Coat, except a little bit of epoxy paint on the cowl and the wheel pants. A little bit of patience and a little extra time spent will go a long way in making your airplane look beautiful like this one. Not that difficult to do.